Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. one week since I was proposed to and of course I'm still over the moon I'm very excited <sighs> we're pretty much set on the date like so where we want to get married we went small um, during the day and we are just like need to like close it with the hall like we need to go there physically see the play is signed but like we know what we want I'm going to try to make like a mini series of like just like vlog my uh, wedding experience planning a wedding experience you know dealing with the Israeli Rabbanut if we go with Rabbanut in the end um, you know dealing with Orthodox family members but not being Orthodox budgeting everything DIYing most likely some stuff so I'm excited for that. I hope it actually happens. <laughs> hey guys, so this weekend we went up north just to relax a little because we're both stressing out over this wedding. <laughs> we tried booking tickets for a ski trip a couple times and it kept on not working and we just felt like before we start with all this wedding planning we we're getting so overwhelmed. We needed a minute to just like breathe and and like relax so we we did that and it was great. I'll insert a little bit of footage right now. Let's talk wedding. We pretty much know where we want it um, and that's where we're going right now. We're going to check out the hall. It's called the Bite of a Guy in the city of David. Uh, we have good friends that got married there in October and their wedding was absolutely beautiful. So we're hoping to take a lot of ideas from what they did um, and kind of make it our own. Probably the food will be dairy. Um, and I'm just trying to keep everything as low budget as possible. First of all, because I don't believe in expensive weddings, but also because we have a lot of family coming in from abroad and it's enough that people have to pay to fly in to the country. I don't want to make the wedding even more expensive. Um, I also just really want my wedding to be intimate. I want to know everyone and I think it's ridiculous to spend so much money on a wedding that can go to so many other things but we're starting with the hall we have someone who's hopefully going to help us plan it and once we get the bid things out of the way i think we'll be more relaxed and then also we have to start figuring out like the legal part of getting married but we're not even there yet the most important thing now is that we close a date because people want to book flights so we're going to see the hall now. I hope I, we wrote like a list of questions. I hope we're going to ask the right things. Brought a measuring tape. I need to measure anything. And that's pretty much that. You know, I moved to Israel six years ago, six and a half years ago. Um, so like as it is, like navigating things here is always a little bit harder. Um, but also just planning a wedding it's not something I've ever done before, so I don't really know what I'm doing, and I work, you know, I can't just dedicate all my time to it. Um, and it's normally something that parents help out with a little more, but we don't really have that option of giving our parents responsibilities in this event, so we're just kind of winging it. And that's why I'm filming this, to like, maybe help somebody else, but see what the haul. You know, it's very easy on YouTube to like only talk about the fun stuff in your life and only highlight the good moments, but um, the last week I have just been so overwhelmed and I'm having such a hard time mentally that I thought it would just be the biggest lie in the universe to like talk about planning my wedding and so it's like all like butterflies and rainbows and like I'm like it's it's not like I need to just be clear on that um 
it's just been really hard like and I barely did anything yet and I already just feel like I'm struggling so I guess we should start with the hall um, the city of David where we is the people we have to go through to um, book the hall that we wanted which is called Bait Bagai it's a beautiful outdoor small venue for up to like max 150 people if like and that's usually like a conference, not like a wedding where people need to move around and dance and eat. Um, and because Yehuda works there, we went through like someone who you don't normally go through in the beginning and plan to see the place and like visualize everything. And we get to the hall and the guy just completely forgot to tell us that he couldn't make it. And... Um, not only that, but the hall was totally under construction. So I'll insert some footage here, but you can see like, if I had never been in an event there before, I would have run away. Like, you know, you can't envision your wedding when like everything's like dirt that's like being like redone and plants that are all dying because they're putting in new ones. And it was very disappointing. And we spoke to the Marcaza as Manot. And once we explained to them what happened, how we started going through this guy, we said, oh my God, like, did he even save us the right date? Because we had spoke to him about saving us the afternoon of the 20th. And then she says, I have you written down for the evening of the 20th. So not only did he not show up to our appointment, but he also booked us for the wrong hours of the day. And someone had taken the afternoon of the 20th. I thought we were gonna have to change the date of the wedding because we thought this afternoon was available once we explained to them that he not only didn't show up and didn't save us the right time they felt really bad and they basically put pressure on the people who booked in the afternoon to close the booking and they ended up canceling and we got the 20 back and they gave us a pretty good price because they felt bad for the situation but like that's how this all started like there's just so much that goes into a wedding even like when you're making it small there's so much nuance and there's just such a long list of things to do and even though we're having a wedding planner help us I'm just so incredibly overwhelmed so let's just like talk about like what's going on so far so now the date is officially the 20th of May and we know where it's happening but this um, hall comes with nothing but tables and chairs a kitchen for the catering service to use and two speakers so everything else we have to bring putting aside like all the bureaucracy of israel of like like to like um legally get married here which is like a whole nother thing that like is stressing me out the actual event itself we have to take care of everything so a photographer that we like and can afford we have to find music that we can that we like and can afford catering that we like and can afford as well as a bar service which we know we want to go with the same that our friends used um but we have there's like nuances to that like making sure that the menu is the same and that the color of the tablecloth is what i want and all this like stuff then there's the decor which i took on for myself i want to be in charge of flowers and table numbers seating chart all of that because i want to save money in that area and then i have to find a dress yehuda has to figure out what he's wearing shoes makeup hair and i now need to create a save the date to send out to everyone because we still do that so that's like my next thing that i'm doing to save the date i need to get a rabbi who will marry us that is approved by the rabbanut i'm working on that then i have to get paperwork to start filling out for the rabbanut i need to make sure that Yehuda has a halachic prenup to sign and then I also want us to have a post nup marriage agreement so I need to hire a lawyer on Fiverr to take care of that which theoretically should be simple but I know nothing about how this stuff works I just know what I needed to say so I don't like I have to look into that I need to find a dress and that for me is like a huge stressor because it needs to be modest enough that my parents won't have a heart attack but i need to like it also and like it also can't be expensive so it's like just a lot and i'm not a size zero which is like what most israeli girls are so like you can't just buy secondhand like so easily and then i have to deal with like the the bridesmaids so 
what I want them wearing, um, if I care, uh, having a bachelorette party, knowing who is most important to me for to be where for what. That's like just the stuff off the top of my mind. I don't understand why I'm having such a hard time because like in theory, it should be a happy time. I'm also very chill. Like as long as the big things are in place, like I should really not have to worry. I guess I just, I, I know that the big things aren't in place now. So like I'm freaking out, but I'll still be happy at my wedding if the girls show up wearing whatever color. I'll still be happy if the flowers don't end up hung up on the chuppah. I'll still be happy if the fabric isn't on the chuppah. These little things don't bother me in day-to-day -day life so like why am i stressing out so much and i think like thinking about it really deeply for a moment the answer that i come up with is a wedding is like combining all your worlds together not only is it my world and Yehuda's world it's our secular lifestyle with our family's very traditional orthodox lifestyle and I guess there's a reason I moved to a different country and have chosen to live far away from my family and it's because I know how hard it is for me and how hard it is for them to feel and witness that reality and now I'm basically creating an event where everyone will have to witness my reality and will judge me for it and I think that freaks me out a lot because I don't want to compromise my happiness for theirs but I also don't want them to hate me. So I think that's where a lot of my stress is really coming from. And I just don't understand how people find time to plan a wedding. And like, yeah, my, my engagement is short, so it's like even more so, but I don't know. I, I'm just so overwhelmed and and like when you see like a beautiful wedding video in three months from now and you're like oh my gosh like it must have been so perfect like no like it wasn't so perfect it was a nightmare also in like my mind i'm like why are you so stressed out like you still have like your wedding's on tomorrow it's in may like you have time i guess if you have endless funds planning a wedding is not so bad and it's like i'm thrilled to be wearing huda like i just want to enjoy Marrying the love of my life like I don't know why like I'm upset at myself that I can't just live in the moment and know everything is gonna be okay because obviously everything is gonna be okay no matter what we're gonna get married on the <laughs> because we have a place to get married and whatever is is that's all for now I guess so um <laughs> those are just uh how my thoughts and how I'm feeling and um I guess this ends like episode one of like the nightmare that is planning a wedding.